let me walk you through the extraction of a 208 in a CAD. I use a size 15C scalpel because it's a little bit smaller than a size 15. So it's easier to get in those tiny diastemas like you see here between the teeth. And you want to make stabbing incisions, so don't push and pull the scalpel because that way you will slide and slit and uh, cut something you're not supposed to. But make small stabs and then move the scalpel one millimeter at a time and make a new stab and one millimeter and a new stab. And you want to keep around a 15 degree angle towards the tooth so you can really get down and cut that junctional epithelium and make way for your luxator. I'm using a triangular flap here, so make a vertical releasing incision on the mesial part. And you want to make it at the mesial line angle of that tooth, so right where the mesial root ends. Here I'm using a feline periosteal elevator, which is straight, so it's very nice and very useful for cats. And you release the flap like with any other flap, small portions at the time. Make sure you get all of the soft tissue away from the bone. And I'm paying a little attention here to try and release this part before I start to uh, drill because I don't want this, this uh, spot to tear. So I'm making sure that I'm releasing it nicely with the periosteal elevator to get the gums away from the bone. Here I'm using a root tip burr. This is a very long, very thin burr to gently sweep away bone, so the alveolar bone, the buccal bone, from the buccal surface. And you can remove bone all the way down to the root tip in this instance. And you see these white fibers that are dorsal to my burr. These can just be cut with the burr. You can uh, move them in the way with the periosteal elevator. It is not blood vessels. It is not nerves or anything vital. These are just some ligaments, some fibers, and you can just remove them with your burr like I'm doing here. Because if you don't remove them with the burr, you will not be able to remove enough bone and go apical enough, so apical is towards the root tip. And so now I'm creating my groove. So basically you just increase the space between the root and the bone so you can make room for your luxator to go in and twist. I'm sectioning the crowns in this direction and to section the mesial roots, you have to follow Follow that ridge of the tooth that will lead you straight down to where you're supposed to go. So I'm now I'm inserting. This is a two millimeter uh, luxating instrument that I put in between the tooth and the bone. So in that groove I just made with my burr nicely fits this instrument, and I'm. Rotating a little bit to see if I can get the tooth moving and if the tooth is moving then you keep that pressure for 10 seconds. So you should not rotate very hard, just a, a force you can apply with two fingers. And again I'm twisting, rotating, seeing if my tooth is moving and yes it's moving a little bit. Okay so I know I'm in a great spot. And that means I can, I can uh, keep the pressure. Here I switch to a dentonomic luxating instrument. This is extremely thin, so this one will nicely slide into the periodontal ligament space on the palatal aspect of this root. And this is often the final touch I need to make it completely loose, is to slide a very thin instrument in even a very thin luxator that you sharpened nicely, or one of those new dentonomic luxators. And then you remove the distal root first. You want to check that 
the apex is nice and round. Here I'm using an elevator to again get in that space that I created with my burr to twist, hold the pressure for some seconds. I also move in between the two mesial roots and a little bit in the front here and you can get it out pretty easily. So rotate and a gentle push. Check the root tip, see if it's nice and round. So in order to get the palatal root out, you have to remove a little bit more bone on the buccal aspect. I'm using my root tip burr to gently drill away. And you cannot go as deep as you could on the buccal aspect. You have to be a little bit careful not to go too deep. So instead, I'm creating more like a funnel, like a cone shape. So I'm removing more bone here on top. So I can visualize the root, go a little bit deeper, and then I start to create my grooves. And the reason you don't want to go very deep is because the right dorsal to this is the infraorbital canal. So you may encounter the uh, artery if you uh, go too deep. So again, I'm using a very sharp lock sanding instrument to get in that space between the root and bone. And this is very useful for working on the palatal or the lingual aspect, having an extremely sharp lock sanding instrument. So I'm just getting that in between the bone and the root. Now I switch to a more bulky instrument. This is an elevator that you are allowed to twist. So I'm just twisting a little bit and seeing if this root moves. And yes, it moves a little bit. That means you're in the correct spot and you can keep the pressure for around 10 seconds. And then you move around, go to the other side, twist and see if it moves. Yes, it moves a little bit here. Then I keep the pressure, go a little bit deeper twist again. If you twist and it doesn't move, it means that you're not in the you're not engaged in that periodontal ligament space like I just did here, it didn't move. So I moved a little bit deeper and now I can see the root tip or the root is moving a little bit. Okay, so that means I have to keep the pressure for about 10 seconds. Don't rotate very hard. You are stretching the ligament fibers. You are not trying to break them. You're trying to stretch them because eventually they will give in and they will start to break themselves. And that's when you feel the root becoming very loose and you can pull it out with your extraction forceps. Don't worry about this bleeding. Do not try and make it stop. You will only waste time. It will stop by itself. As long as it's not pulsating bleeding, then you're good. If you experience pulsating bleeding here, then you stop the extraction, you pack it with some gel foam, spongo stand, something like that. And you keep the pressure for a few minutes and it should stop again. Now I wanted to, I wasn't quite happy with the mobility, so I wanted to just remove a little bit more bone. So I'm again, I'm going in with that root tip burr that is so tiny that it can easily go in these tiny places. I'm just outlining the root a little bit more with that burr. Just going a little bit deeper, making the grooves a little bit more obvious. Again, going in and keeping that finger light pressure. So you're only allowed to use the amount of pressure that you can apply with two fingers, not your whole wrist or your hand, because you may break it. You don't want to break this palatal root because it will be very difficult to get out the root tip. Now it's completely loose and you see the root tip is nice and round and smooth. So I'm happy with that. 
then you always do a control x-ray to make sure it's it's out a tip i have when you do the x-ray is to take a complete dorsal ventral x-ray of that uh, of the caudal maxilla because then you can see the little holes where the roots were from above and that makes it very easy to see root tips here i'm using a diamond football burr to make everything nice and smooth so because if you have any pointy bone fragments sticking out when it chews on that it's not very nice and can impede healing always remember to release that palatal gingiva here release it and why do we want to release it we want to do that because we have to be able to take a nice bite with our suture again after you release that you have a sharp edge you need to smooth that down to make everything nice and smooth now we want to release tension and the way you do that is you pull the flap up to stretch it and then you insert your scissors right at this spot to separate the inner periosteum from the mucosa and you see you can see the the layers are quite obvious here so i'm grabbing with my forceps on the inside of the flap trying to avoid and grabbing on the edge of the flap because that will damage your flap so always if you can grab it on the inside now i'm pulling it down and i see yes the tension has been relieved and i'm quite happy with that so i will start to suture always suture from caudal to rostral and i'm using simple interrupted sutures with a monocryl 5 odd on a P3 reverse cutting needle. And I'm using a surgeon's knot with three extra throws on top. And because we released that palatal gingiva here, we can take a nice bite with our suture. We need about three millimeters in between each suture and at least a three millimeter bite on each side. This part is very important to get this little tiny piece of gingiva released from that tooth because you want to be able to place a suture in that spot and if it's still attached to the tooth you cannot get your needle underneath to place your suture so you have to release that be very gentle i really love that straight feline periosteal elevator the one i recommend is from im3 and is it's really excellent for this so what i want to do is the I'm not trying to oppose the edges as they were before I extracted the tooth. So the edge you see on that gingiva, I want to place that where the palatal root were. And you will see that just in a little bit where, where I make the next suture. And you can see exactly where I lay that flap. So this edge right here is getting sutured onto the where that palatal root were. And now you can take this more flexible mucosa, this part, and you pull that down and attach it to the gingiva on 207 right here. So now you are opposing mucosa to gingiva, not gingiva to gingiva, because we needed that other gingiva to be pulled palatally to cover that palatal defect from the palatal root. So I hope that makes sense. So 
So in order to close the gap, you use the mucosa that you can pull down and then suture to the gingiva. Again, just make a last, last suture here. And for home care, basically you uh, prescribe wet, wet food, wet food, so no dry food for 10 days, no toys. If you want it to heal faster, you can uh, send them home with some chlorhexidine to apply once or twice daily, and it will heal very quickly. It's very rare that these days 